Hey, welcome to Trimmer Trails, the channel that's all about the F-150 Ford Trimmer. It is hot today. It's like 102 out here at the lake. So I figured what better way to cool off than to get up into some 10,000 foot mountain peaks just outside of Moab, Utah on the Colorado, Utah border. We're talking about the LaSalle Mountains and today we're gonna go do the Geyser Pass. Come along, it's a beautiful ride. All right, so Geyser Pass. The Geyser Pass is located in the LaSalle Mountains, which is of course in Utah, which is south of Moab and just to the east of Monticello. This trail, you're gonna be able to see 12,000, almost 13,000 foot mountain peaks. A lot of it is in the forest. We are gonna go through the Pack Creek fire area that we'll get to a little bit later, but there's nothing major on this trail. A few little ditches, some water crossings. It's a really fun Sunday, quote unquote Sunday kind of drive. There's so much to explore up here. There are several different trails that you can do, um, including the LaSalle Mountain Pass Trail, which we didn't get to do because of the Pack Creek Fire. But we're going to try and get back to do that. Tons of places to camp if you want. But Geyser Pass itself is 25 miles long. You can expect two to two and a half hours if you do it straight through. But I highly recommend stopping at a couple spots and just taking in the views. So what can we expect? Geyser Pass is a pretty well-maintained road up through the mountains. Obviously it's dirt, some small rocks, and a few short-lived shelf roads. One thing I failed to mention in the intro is that me and my wife are not professional off-landers. We're not professional off-roaders. We wanted to create a channel where regular people that didn't have a lot of experience knew they could get up into these places with their trimmer. Hence the reason for the channel. With that being said, let's dive into it. The first couple miles of this trail are some of the best views you're actually going to get of the whole mountain range and the valley below you. I highly recommend you slow down a little bit and take in the views. I kind of blew through this section trying to race up into the mountains and now looking back at the footage I realized I should have slowed down just a little bit more. Once you start getting up into the trees, it's your last look back at the valley, and man, what a view it is. From here on out, you're going to start climbing, and you're going to get up into the forest. So enjoy the view off to your right one last time before you take off into the mountains.
about halfway up the pass, you're going to start coming into the remnants of what was some of the Pat Creek Fire area. The Pat Creek Fire cost something like $2.6 million to get contained. It burned several structures. Luckily, no one was injured. However, it did change the landscape. The worst thing about the Pat Creek Fire was it was started by somebody that was out camping and decided not to put out their campfire when they left. They did a good job getting the road back in shape. They uh, graded it down. There's a few little ruts and a few little rocks here and there, but all in all, super easy to get through. It's a shame it happened. I hate forest fires, especially when they weren't created by nature. It did open up a couple of views that you can kind of see some of the mountains, but was the cost really worth that? I don't think so. It's pretty simple stuff. Make sure you put out your campfire so that we all can continue to enjoy places like this. Like, we shouldn't even have to say that, right? Luckily, it's pretty short-lived, and before you know it, you're right back up in the grass and the tall trees again. like I was totally in the groove. We went over the pass and I just kept driving and driving, not really paying attention to where the heck I was going and I ran into a fence. Well, I knew from experience that a lot of times out on BLM land, you just open the fence and close the fence behind you and keep going. So I thought, well, this is part of the trail until I came across this sign that said, uh, private land. So back to the fence we went and back the way we came. So at the top of the pass, it splits to the left and the right and I went left. There are some really cool things up here to explore. It was icing on us, which is really cool in the middle of June, but we didn't get a lot of time to hang out there. Moonlight Meadows is just straight ahead, and then Burrow Pass is where we just came from. The proper way to do the loop on Geyser Pass is to stay right, which is right here. There are some restrooms up there if you need to take a potty break. So just remember to stay right, but however you can go left and explore a little bit. Now, let's get back on the trail. Coming back down the pass on the other side of the mountain, we get to some of the short-lived shelf roads that were mentioned earlier in the video. These shelf roads are pretty well maintained, even in the mud I was in full control. And to be honest with you, the exposure was only like 600 feet down, so that was a bonus. If you're brand new to overlanding or off-roading, you're going to experience a lot of shelf roads. I mean, shelf roads have some of the most prettiest views and get you to some of the coolest places. If you haven't experienced a whole lot of shelf roads, maybe this is a good one to get started on. Really, the only trick to a shelf road is this. Point the vehicle straight and don't fall over the side.
last thing I want to mention is I did practically this whole trail in four high. I went to four low coming down the mountain pass on the backside only because I didn't want to use my brakes and it was a little muddy. That being said, if this trail is dry, you can do four high the whole way. So there you have it, Geyser Pass. I hope you enjoyed that. We had a really good time out there. I highly recommend this trail if you're brand new to off-roading or overlanding and you just wanna get out and experience what your truck can kind of do. This was one of the first trails that me and my wife actually did. It is also a great trail if you have the family, if you're down in Moab area or in Monticello and you just wanna get up into some cold air. We loved it. It was literally 45, 55 degrees with ice pellets hitting us as you saw in the video. I think we saw maybe two or three vehicles the whole time we were there and we just got out and explored. We rate all our trails on a one to five scale and it's pretty simple. We do a fun, a fear, a technical and scenery. For fun, we gave this a three. You know, I didn't really get bored driving, even though it was an easy road. There was enough little things that kept me interested and kept my eyes kind of on the road where I was mildly entertained. As far as fear, this isn't really a fearful road at all. This is a really good mountain road if you're inexperienced with shelf roads or just off-road in general. I give it a 1.5. The only reason I give it even the 0.5 was because you do cross over one or two shelf roads that are well maintained and and very easy to do technical i give it a 1.5 the only reason i give it the 0.5 was because there are a couple little switchbacks and the shelf road the scenery we gave it a three you're in a lot of the trees for a long time but you do pop above them and once you get up there and you can look out you can see all of the canyon lands you can see castle valley you can just see for miles and miles it's beautiful so it was a it was a great drive you know we gave it a solid three one side note, if you get back on the loop, which is paved, that goes all through the LaSalle Mountains, and you follow that down to Castle Valley, I highly recommend getting down to Castle Valley at dusk. Beautiful red monoliths, rocks, things that look like castles, hence the name. But all in all, I really enjoyed Geyser Pass. It's a great first timer trail. It's a good experience. You know, if you're experienced, it's still a great trail to get up and cool off and see a little bit of different scenery than what you're used to in the Moab Valley. So you can camp at Warner Lake, which we did, which is on top of the mountains, a beautiful spot up there. They have, I think, 30 campground sites. Just get in early or reserve it online and uh, spend the night up there and then go get yourself on the Geyser Pass and then shoot down back into the valley and continue your adventure. Hope you had a good time watching it. Thank you so much. Leave some comments down below if you have any questions. Until next time, we'll see you on the trails. <laughs>